Welcome all of you, the viewers of Poland Daily Culture. My name is Maria Kontelska and we are recording at the Royal Castle in Warsaw where an exhibition, The World of Rembrandt, was just opened. Here with us is Regina Dmoska, a conservator. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you as well. Madam, and you are a specialist in Rembrandts, especially in Warsaw Rembrandts, because you treated them. Tell us a few words, where were they painted and what story did they tell us? There is no uh, documentation uh, proving uh, the time uh, when they were painted. Painting bears the signature with the date uh, 1641 and uh, this gives us the clue when they might be painted. In uh, Rembrandt time uh, the paintings were ordered fr uh, from the artist and all the person, the client, they, they brought, they bought by themselves the support canvas or, or, or panel or metal plate. The panels and the canvases were very expensive in those yes, times. Yes, they were uh, important uh, materials, uh, expensive. And in this time, actually, the Polish oak panels were the most valuable in the art market in West Europe. Uh, so uh, if someone ordered a painting, the document uh, describing the, the, the order uh, survived. In this case, there is not. The paintings have special um, history. They are now uh, presented as a, as a pair of portraits, pendant. But since the beginning, they were not pendant. They were painted separately. And uh, in, uh, in terms of Dutch, uh, they are not portrait, but drawings. It's a depiction, not the exact person, but some model was used to, to paint the portrait. And uh, the case of a girl is really special because during the treatment and researches uh, of the painting, we discovered the uh, first sketch of another por woman's portrait, which was done by Rembrandt just with, with very few, uh, very fast, uh, dark paint brush strokes. It was abandoned for some reasons, and uh, some time later, the Rembrandt used uh, this panel to paint the new portrait, this girl. This painting was probably done uh, for selling. Uh, at uh, his house uh, in Amsterdam, he had his studio with students and pupils, and also a room uh, where he displayed his works for the uh, clients. Uh, and uh, this might be uh, done for selling in this way. And the man's portrait is also, uh, also done uh, as a trony. Later on, somehow, they were uh, put together to be a pair because uh, it was uh, much uh, more appreciated in the art market. And for this reason, the both were slightly cut down, and mostly the girl, the upper uh, side and the both sides, they were cut down. So we have the um, full uh, frame on a low part. Uh, they were made uh, as a pair. And um, in the past, they changed the owners. They were sold uh, many times. They were transported uh, during the uh, Polish period in Vienna and so on. Uh, so they suffer a lot after the transportation. And uh, in a natural way, uh, during the time, the paint layer became more transparent. So there is the painting which is behind it, behind the girl, was a scratch and a painting of something else, a sketch of it. It was a sort of sketch. And Very now we can see a few elements of it. So this Rembrandt was so tight-fisted, he didn't take another canvas. It's expensive, and why to, to, uh, to drop it? it yes. just, just to, it's happened many times by other artists that they use uh, uh, supports. The first sketch, through uh, years shows up uh, to the viewers and they dislike it, the owners wanted not to, to, to see because it's a little, little bit destroyed the view of the girl. So it was many times overpainted. But to Rem by Rembrandt or by no, someone? No, no, but later on, later on. So by someone others. else overpainted Listen. the painting? When the painting were in hands of following owners, yes. they ordered it by another artist to overpaint these parts of the painting, which uh, showed uh, the first sketch. And uh, you can see the oval shape 
over the head of a girl and in a part of her breast, the horizontal mostly uh, dark brush strokes. So at least they did it good enough that it's not destroyed. But anyway, uh, such a situation caused many restoration, over cleaning, over painting, so it was not good for the painting. I see, but it survived and it's beautifully made, hanging right now in Warsaw as a pair to Rembrandt's, I would say almost living. The exhibition, we see many other paintings, those from brands make a huge contrast with, with the other paintings because they really, they live. We can see that those two are truly alive. Yes, uh, because uh, in this moment when the, those paintings were done by, by Rembrandt, he put much in focus in his work, the attention to display as much as possible uh, the real uh, figures, even in a movement. What's the most important in our girl's portrait is the movement he almost approached to the frame. He almost put her fingers on the frame, but not yet. And this, uh, this was found by Dutch uh, uh, Rembrandt specialist, Professor Ernst van de Wettering, as the highest point in Rembrandt approach to this uh, effect, which is called trompe. We will talk a little bit more about it in the next episode. That's why we invite you to stay with us for another one, because the story of Warsaw Rembrandt is truly unique. Thank you very much for watching Perlan Daily Culture.